Let's bring in live now technology journalist Chris Griffith. Uh, Chris, we're hearing from Optus that it's Hi, not Ashley. a cyber attack. So what is it? <laughs> uh, well, this is uh, another great uh, uh, stuff up, if you like, by Optus. We had last year in September, we had the um, cyber attacks and, and uh, now we've had this. I mean, this is kind of pervaded everything you've got not just phone users you've got mobile internet landlines with mobile internet you're dealing with um, banks retail outlets um, other providers a whole range at melbourne train service all of these things have been down i think too we've seen poor communication because from just because this event started like 4 a.m this morning on downdetected.com there was already four thousand complaints at that time and seven hours later um it only now are we getting some idea of what's happened. Um, to me, it seems like it would be in the core network. I'm not an engineer, of course, but because it's affecting all of these different sectors of Optus's communications, it sounds like it's something at the heart of the network. Absolutely, and this will be disastrous for Optus. Uh, you referred to that cyber attack uh, a while back. It sounds like the company really hasn't learnt when it comes to these crisis communications. We heard the CEO defending the communication it's having uh, with its customers, but in terms of the CEO making a couple of phone calls into a Sydney and a Melbourne radio station, that's not really addressing customers right across the country who are really struggling with this today. Absolutely. I saw the reports of uh, uh, people on the train stations in Melbourne absolutely puzzled because their whole, um, you know, the, their commuting during peak hour was down. We've got hospitals involved in this. You know, the whole northern side of Melbourne uh, hospital network was impacted. No triple O calls on landlines. We, we knew about that pretty late in the piece. But we're dealing not just with inconvenience, we're dealing with essential services. And uh, so Optus uh, will take a big hit in terms of its reputation to be able to, particularly in the business services area where it's providing, you know, uh, absolutely essential communications around uh, lives and, uh, and the economy. So what does it tell us, uh, the fact that this is everywhere across the country and not just in specific geographic locations? Because when we do see these outages, it's usually in a small area and they get things back on track pretty quickly. This is pretty yeah. deep, obviously, in the network, as, as you were pointing out. Do we know if there were any upgrades going on, any equipment being replaced, anything happening behind the scenes at Optus that, that could have sparked this? Uh, well, that's a really good question. We don't know this, but, but you know, if there's any suggestion of negligence or insufficient maintenance or, or errors, then they could be facing further legal action because an awful lot of businesses and services will have faced, um, you know, economic disadvantage. But I'd, I'd like to just add one quick thing here. It's also a, a wake-up call for businesses to think about resilience, that is, having a plan B, like another uh, network provider or another telco uh, that they have maybe a, a, a Telstra uh, emergency account that they can switch to in these cases. Like even retail outlets couldn't serve people or they could serve people coffee, they, people couldn't pay for it because their networks were down. So it's important that, that businesses think about having an alternative backup plan when this happens. Um, and these days we're going to see options like um, Leo satellite providers, SpaceX, and that providing these kind of services um, to help. Chris, just hold tight. We've got another uh, grab here in from the Optus yep. CEO. She's just spoken on the Sydney radio station um, 2GB. She's talking about a pathway back in terms of restoring the network. Let's just hear what she's had to say. The good news is that we have a path to restoring the whole network and so we're bringing it up progressively as we speak. So it is so up and running in some places? For all our customers. Yeah, and we'll be working through getting it up and running everywhere as soon as we can. And how long are we expecting? Give us some sort of time frame to look toward. Look, we're working through it progressively, so um, we're going as fast as we possibly can. OK, well, that's starting to sound a little bit more positive, isn't it, that services are being restored in some parts, but no timeline there in terms of when everyone across the country is going to be back online. Absolutely. Um, of course, you know, knowing exactly the time frame depends on what the cause was. Um, but uh, uh, and, and that will determine how fast they can bring the network up. But just like when 
you know, computer set systems go down and that they've got to bring equipment back online. And uh, if it's in the core of the network, that could be quite a convoluted process. But we don't know. And uh, hopefully, uh, particularly for commuters, uh, it's going to be re fairly quick so that they know what to do, whether to wait for the train or go home some other way. Chris Griffith, really appreciate your analysis. Thank you so much for joining us.